Hey, it's Ahmad. This is my E400 wagon. Have you ever wanted that cargo box look, even though you know you're probably not going to use it much, but you just kind of like that Euro look? That's kind of the vibe that I was going for a little bit. Now, that, that image gets a lot of hate, so I just want to preface, who cares? Like, I think it looks great. I'm not going to leave it on 100% of the time, but I do think it really complements the lines of the vehicle. I think they look awesome on wagons. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the crossbars that I added and the roof cargo box that I added and where I got it, how much I paid for it, and just a quick install on how easy it is to actually install these things. So we're gonna check that out right now, let's go. Okay, let's talk crossbars. There's a lot of different kind of crossbars you can buy. Like there's the ones that have the little uh, bar that sticks out at the side. I wanted something more low profile and I wanted something that kind of matched the contours of the car itself. So if you look, it actually just kind of goes down with the lines of the car. Now these are Amazon universals that I found. They're not made by Amazon or anything like that. They're just made by a company that sells on Amazon. And I really liked the black on black. I didn't want any silver. Um, this is just a protective sticker that I haven't taken off yet off the key, but it is silver under that. I'm probably gonna black that out. And I am planning on blacking my roof rails out. But anyway, back to this uh, roof rack, uh, sorry, roof bars. These were an Amazon purchase. I kind of gambled. They said there was designed for the C-Series Mercedes. Honestly, it's just a universal. So as long as you have this kind of railing system, you can attach these on there. And these do have a certain length. So I wanna make sure that you are paying attention to that when you're buying these because the max and min will impact how wide these can go and how small they can go. And there's a little bit of a difference between the front and the back, the, how wide it is basically. So anyway, I bought these, I tried them out, they worked out, they were pretty cheap. And I don't understand why people would pay so much more but if this is a style you're going for, I highly recommend these bars because they do look good. They're fairly easy to adjust them. It took me a few seconds to kind of figure out the logic behind them, but I did, and uh, they're fairly easy to adjust, and they work really well. So that is the roof bars that I ordered. Now let's move on to the cargo box because this, this is a very, very tough decision. There is hundreds of boxes out there. There's hundreds of uses for them, and really what I was going for is aesthetics over really anything. So what I did was research a lot of these and kind of figured out like, okay, what size do I want? Because a lot of them were very, very short. And I knew I wanted something a little bit longer. This was, I, think, I believe this is 78 inches. We'll measure it in a second. But this was an NO one that I found on Facebook Marketplace. Now, a lot of the Mercedes OEM ones kept popping up, but they were kind of blocky and I just didn't think that they would look as good. When I purchased this one, my hope was that this low profile but long design would actually make it look really good. And I do think it works. I think what I need to do though is adjust the angle a little bit. I think I need to lower the rear. Basically what I have to do at this point is move the crossbar slightly back and it'll kind of flatten it out a little bit because I do think the rear is sticking up a little bit. And I finally found this one and you can really get these for between, I would say 180 to $400 for a really, really good roof rack. Now this one did come a little scratched and you can see the scratches on here. Quite a bit of scratches actually but at the same time i was like you know what i have plans to wrap this uh i don't know what i'm going to wrap it yet i have an idea of what i want to do to wrap this so i didn't really care that much as long as it was functional and this box right here it actually does have a dual dual load so you can actually open this side up and i'll show you guys in a second and you can also open the other side up so you can actually load on both sides but that feature also makes it really really easy to install and i'll show you why anyway this is the rack i ended up with let's talk about features and do a quick show of how this is installed okay so opening it obviously very easy process you just take the key turn it press that button and pop it open it's got a dual kind of hinge mechanism going on over here and so if i just move this up and down so let's talk about how this is installed so these little brackets right here you actually untwist this, and I'm gonna do this just for the video. Okay, so that comes out, and what you'll see here is this little metal thing, and you kind of pull that out, 
and you just lift it. So this is literally the piece that goes in. The crossbar sits right here. So to install it, you actually just slide it under. It's a lot easier to do with two hands. So give me a second, pop that through. So you can adjust it. So it's got these rubber kind of like guides or whatever you want to call them. You can remove them. You can move this back and forth depending on how far your crossbar is based on this. So I have it kind of maxed out to the front here. So now you take this, put it on that while you're holding the crossbar under. And I'm just going to start turning. Okay, there we go. So now I can use two hands and make sure that it's lining up. Starts getting tight. I actually tighten it quite a bit. I want this thing flying off while I'm driving. And now it's at a point where I can't really turn it. So we are good. I'm actually going to buy more of this uh, trim because I need to fill the spaces because there's a little bit of space on a lot of these and the trim was missing. So that is how you install it. You just line it up and I just measured each side right here to make sure it was symmetrical on both sides. So that way it's sitting even. To close it, you literally just close it, make sure this is closed, do that, and now it's locked. And you can actually go do the same thing on the other side. See, pops right open. Close that, lock it, good to go. There is nowhere in this box that tells me what model it is. This has a sticker for the materials and a manufacturer number. I might be able to type that in. Other than that, it's got this information right here on how to make sure you load it properly. So different mounting points that are included. I know it's an NO, so it's going to be easy to find, but they all just look the same online. So we're going to go ahead and measure this to make sure I have the dimensions correct before I start searching for it. But I also still want to be able to open the hatch without any interference. And this does clear the sunroof, so let's check that out. So plenty of clearance with the sunroof popped. You can see I can still open that. And because my sunroof actually goes into the car, I shouldn't have a problem opening the sunroof. Hello. So one of the biggest questions about roof racks is the noise, right? So without the cargo box, the roof bars actually made a little bit of a noise. And once I put the little uh, trim at the top, it actually got a lot quieter. However, they still made a little bit of noise. Like it's inevitable. You're adding something to the aerodynamics of the car, but surprisingly at higher speeds, they're not that bad, especially if you have music on, you don't even really notice it. Now, if you're about to go on a long road trip and you just want absolute silence, you probably want to figure that part out, but there's a small price to pay for adding this stuff on here. Now, when I added this, it was a different story. Uh, at first I was like, wow, this, uh, it, it made like a booming noise almost. And then I went back and readjusted kind of like where it sat because originally it was sitting a little forward. So I readjusted it to be a little further back and it's actually a lot quieter now. And same thing at higher speeds, you notice it, but you don't notice it that much. And I think with music on, you barely actually notice it's there. So is it worth it? It depends. Like I can't say that yours is going to be quiet. It all depends on how you install it, where you install it, what bars you're using, what box you're using. So everything's going to be, everybody's going to have a different experience. On mine, I actually don't mind it on the highway at all. Around the city, I notice it because there's less road noise. But on the highway, the road noise kind of makes up for the additional noise this has. But also, I usually have my music blaring or the windows rolled down, so I don't notice it as much. But there is no insistent whistling noise that you hear about. There is a little bit, especially at lower speeds, that you can hear, but it's more of just a wind noise that you hear. So to me, that's my experience with this setup right here. If you are about to go on a road trip, if you need extra space, this is a really good setup. As I mentioned, I kind of did this for aesthetic purposes. I do plan on using this because we are doing some road trips later this year. I do carry a full spare wheel and tire with me in the car. 
And normally it takes up a lot of space in the back, especially if I'm going with my family somewhere. So now what's going to be awesome is I can actually put the spare in the back and I still have a lot of storage because this can actually hold a lot of the other things that we might bring on a road trip. So that is my wagon setup. And I just wanted to make sure I shared a little bit about what I did. I do like to experiment a little bit, so I just figured I'd share my experience. But either way, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or you can DM me on Instagram. Let me know what you guys think I should wrap this with. I have an idea of what I want to do. Now, I'm not going to go a different color. It is going to be some shade of gray, black, something like that on what I'm thinking of. But I'm not going to do like red or anything like that. So just let me know what you guys think I should do. And uh, I'd be curious to see what the feedback is. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, the links are down below on exactly what I ordered from Amazon. And that's it. Thanks again for watching and looking forward to doing a lot more stuff to this wagon. Bye.